Hey guys, before we actually get into how to use the multi-threading library, I want to do a little demonstration so we can come to understand better how it actually works. I'm going to do this in Paint. So the way a normal AutoWit program runs is we have this one line which is going to be the main logic of our program and it only runs on one thread, one computer thread. I'm going to put a one right here and boom, that's thread number one. So I cleaned that hideous looking one up a little bit. Continuing where we left off, when you're using this multi-threading library, your program is going to follow the mainline logic like it does on thread one, but then when it reaches the point in your program that summons the extra thread, so to speak, it's going to do this and branch off from your main program into its own separate thread until you tell it to stop or you close the thread in which case it goes back to the main line. So now this is going to be number two. Bam. So now we have stuff happening on the main line still, while stuff is also happening on this secondary thread. And you can do this with multiple different threads. With the multi-threading library, as far as I understand, this isn't actually technically uh, multi-threading. This is on a separate uh, script which is being run on another thread. So it's not true multi-threading. Doesn't matter because it still is on a different thread. One of the unique features about this library, it has the ability to communicate between thread two and thread one. Using a simple example, let's say on thread one, I have a loop that's incrementing every second. And let's say on thread two, I wanna output the value or how many times it's looped. What we can do is we can send a message from thread one to thread two with the variable loop count. Thread two will receive that message and do what it needs to with it. And if needed, thread two could also send a message back to thread one. While we're still talking concepts, it's super important to remember that we have to close thread two. Otherwise, it's just gonna continue on. We don't need thread two open if we're not using it. So I've created a new file. I'm gonna save it in the same folder that I extracted the AU thread master into. It has to be the same folder as AU thread.au3. I'm gonna call this uh, part two because that's the part two of this, this is the part two of the series. Now we need to include the thread library, so we're gonna do hashtag include less than sign au thread dot au three greater than sign. Save it and now we're ready to use it. So we've included the threading library in our project, but we haven't actually started anything up. So what we're gonna do is do underline au thread underscore startup parentheses. Make sure you have a capital A, a capital T with thread, and a capital S with startup. The description in the GitHub for this is, this function is responsible for calling the callback functions if the currently running process is a thread, or saving important data to temporary files if it's the main thread. Now that sounds complicated. My understanding of it is, if this was a car, right now with this line, we're starting up the engine. Car ain't moving unless we start the engine, and right now we're turning the key. Now before we get any further, I want to tell you what we're going to be doing in this little tutorial video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to display two tooltips at the same time, but I'm going to have each of them have a five second wait before it's supposed to start the second one. This is the script we're going to be using with multi-threading. If I were to run it right now, you'll see it shows hello in the tooltip, then world, but it doesn't do them at the same time. That's because with AutoIt, it displays the tooltip hello, then it's gonna wait two seconds, and then it's gonna display the tooltip world and wait two seconds. To make this work, we've gotta take this second tooltip and display it on a different thread, thread two, right here. This way, the first tooltip is gonna be running here while the second tooltip is running here at the same time and they won't interfere with each other. This might seem simple, but just imagine what would happen if you replaced the tooltip with multiple image searches. This is a pretty poorly drawn square, but imagine the performance on a bot that split its image searching into four coordinates on the screen, and it was simultaneously doing four image searches in each single area. That would be a pretty efficient bot. So as you can see, there's a lot of possibilities for this. So back on track, let's create a function that's gonna be our second thread. Let's call this function thread two. 
Make sure we put our parentheses and it'll be simple. All we're gonna do is a tooltip with the word world. We're gonna do comma zero comma 140 because I want it to be a little bit lower on the screen. And then we're gonna sleep for five seconds. And then we're gonna do end funk. Let's create the tooltip for thread one. Everything other than thread two will be on thread one. So we don't have to make another function. We can simply put our tooltip right here. I'm gonna have the word hello comma zero comma 120 which is a little bit above this we're gonna sleep for five seconds now before this tooltip let's go ahead and make a new variable we're gonna call this thread2 equals underscore a u thread underscore start thread parentheses quote thread2 which is the function we've created right here and quote and parentheses make sure to save make sure the a is capital make sure the t is capital the s and this t as well now we've seen what happened when i ran this last time without using multi-threading let's see what happens if we use it with threading if everything goes well we'll see two tooltips displayed at the same time which we've seen previously can't happen unless we're threading so let's see it and look at that, we've got two tooltips, hello world, and they're both being displayed at the same time. So awesome, we've set up the threading, however these are two separate threads. In this demonstration, I've said that we could interact with the threads. We haven't done that. Let's set up interaction. So in our thread2 function, we're going to make a new variable. You can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it msg for message, and I'm going to say it equals underscore au thread underscore get message parentheses what this means is this function is going to get called and if there's a message that was sent it'll be stored in this variable msg all i've experimented with is with strings and numbers now let's change our tooltip from displaying the word world to our variable msg next under au thread get message we're going to do if our variable msg then which means if it's not false if there was a message received we're going to have our tooltip tab that copy it and we're going to have the message of our tooltip be msg the variable which will be sent from our main thread and then we're going to do else so if there wasn't any messages received we're going to have our tooltip but instead of our variable msg we're going to say ah no message received and do our and if if we run the program now you'll see we have hello from the original thread and then we have ah no message received from our second thread to send a message to another thread below the thread we want to send it to we're going to press enter we're going to do underscore au thread underscore send message parentheses and then the variable for our thread which for the thread we're trying to send it to it's thread2 comma quotes the message we're trying to send if you're doing a variable like a number you don't need quotes but i'm doing a string so i'm gonna do quotes welcome to tom's tutorials there we go so if everything worked instead of seeing on oh, no message received we're gonna see welcome to tom's tutorials so let's try it out if i press f5 we see hello and welcome to tom's tutorials if I try commenting out this one line that sends the message, we can see on oh, no message received. So the outcome of what happens in thread two entirely depends on whether or not we send this message, or in other words, the threads interacting with each other. Now, what if we wanted to send a message from our second thread back to our first thread? Let's say that if we do receive a message from the main thread, then we want to send a message back. So go ahead and press enter. And we're gonna do like before, underscore AU thread, oops, I gotta have a capital T, underscore send message. But instead of putting a variable thread name, we're gonna actually type underscore AU thread, underscore main thread parentheses. This stands for the main thread, which is all of this stuff, except this thread two variable we created here. And then we're gonna do a comma, and then whatever we want. Now I want to send the message, we did it, in all caps, because once we've accomplished this, we have threaded the f out of our program. Now I want it to output this message after it outputs hello. So what I'm going to do is below this sleep, I'm going to say under, oops, we got to set a variable. So I'm going to say, let's say uh, main thread underscore msg. 
equals underscore a u thread underscore get message parentheses and then we're going to say if main thread underscore msg then we're going to do another tooltip with the uh, value of the message so with the value of uh, main thread message comma zero comma 180 i want this to display even below our farthest tooltip so we really know something just happened else tooltip oh man we really messed up and then we're gonna do end quote comma zero comma we're gonna display this at 140 actually let's display this at 120 so we won't get mixed up if we don't receive our message it's gonna display it right where our original message was so we won't get confused then we're gonna do end if followed by our sleep which i'll set for five seconds all right let's test it out i pressed f5 we see hello welcome to tom's tutorials and we did it awesome now if we were to continue this bot and but we're done with thread two by the end of all of this we would want to make sure that we closed our thread by doing underscore au thread underscore close thread parentheses the name of our thread which we set as thread two if I ran this script right now, this would be the end of our program, so we wouldn't actually see what happens when we close a thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this message, I'm gonna copy it and paste it right at the beginning of thread two. So now we're gonna close thread two the second it opens. Let's see what happens. So if I press F5, I immediately get an error and we don't see that second tooltip up there because we closed thread two. Before I end the video, I just want to tell you guys, if you go to the GitHub and scroll down just a little bit, you can see some more documentation on how to use it. At the bottom, you'll see all the functions that you can use with this current uh, threading library. Also included in the files you downloaded are two separate examples. The difference mainly is example from the readme.au3 has uh, every single threading function included in it. Whereas example.au3 is just starting a thread and sending the message. You can see there's really not too many functions, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's see what we do with threading.